All right, welcome back. I have, I think, made all of the parts for my airplane now. So I finished the panels. I've added a couple of extra things like uh, wing guns, uh, drop tank, um, an air filter, just to give me some additional options when I go to render. It gives me some different uh, theater and configuration options. There's a very minimal cockpit in here. I decided not to really do much in here because with the glass on and a pilot in there and the tiny windows, I figured once we're doing renders, we're not gonna see much in there. Well, texture in there, but there wasn't any reason to spend a lot of time putting geometry in there. And I didn't, I know I kind of skipped ahead since the last video, um, but I really didn't do any techniques that I haven't already shown you. So I didn't think it was worth me just repeating the same thing over and over again. Um, but so now we're at the point where all the modeling is done and the next big step would be the UV unwrap. But before we do the UV unwrapping, we need to clean up the project file. All right, this method of using shrink wraps and a base mesh and our cutting tools, all these things, uh, it leaves a lot of junk in your file. It leaves, obviously it leaves the cutting tools in your file. It leaves potentially unnecessary base meshes in your file. And the individual pieces often have a lot of extra uh, stuff on them. They have vertex groups that we may or may not need anymore. They may have served their purpose. And we have a lot of modifiers, some of which were uh, like these tees and shorts and things I used for just um, shrink wrapping the edges versus this shrink wrap here, which is the shrink wrap for the base mesh, which you know kind of makes the entire panel conform to the base mesh. Um, it's a good point, it's a good thing, a good idea at this point to clean these things up, get rid of everything you don't need, um, and, and then evaluate your, your modifiers as well. Say, so look at your subdivisions. You probably don't need more than one. Uh, this method doesn't generally need a lot of subdivisions. You know, I like to look at it in this shiny matte cap mode, and if everything looks nice and shiny and smooth, uh, there's no reason to go any higher. You may even find pieces where you can just completely delete the subdivision modifier entirely. So just toggle it back and forth. You can see in this case, I don't want to because I get this pinching artifact here when it's not on. Um, but sometimes you can get rid of it. And anytime you can get rid of a modifier or reduce the number of subdivisions, it's, it's only going to help your render times. Um, probably will need to keep the base mesh shrink wraps. That's the one, again, that, that, that snuggles it down to the, the original base mesh that we created. Uh, and then after you've gotten rid of any of the uh, modifiers you don't need. For example, I don't need these, so I can just delete these. And they're gone. My subdivision is okay. If I look at my vertex groups, the only one I need is probably that S, because it's probably used within the shrink wrap. So I use the S vertex group. So I get rid of all these other vertex groups. We don't need these. We're just kind of cleaning up the file as we go along. Another thing you want to do while you're at this point is to uh, check your UV layout for each panel. Now, if you've been following along, you realize or you, you, you know that when I create my edges, when I create the bevel weights for my edges, I also mark the edges for UV unwrapping. Uh, figuring as long as I'm marking the edges for bevel weights, I might as well mark the seams for UV islands because they're often the same thing. Uh, it just saves time in the long run. Uh, but at this point, as you're checking each piece, it's probably not a bad idea to go into the UV editor and unwrap the piece and see what it looks like, just to see whether or not it looks like you've got any kind of weird stretching or uh, pieces that you, know, you need an extra edge, you need an extra cut somewhere. Uh, this would be the time to, to fix it since you're looking at the piece in detail. The other thing you want to do is you want to apply your mirror modifiers. Uh, if we don't apply the mirror modifier, we're not going to be able to paint asymmetrically across the aircraft. Right? If, the, if, we, if this is mirror, then any texture we paint on this side is going to show up exactly as it does on the other side. And I don't want that for this model since I'm going to have stencils and camouflage and stuff. So you also want to make sure you apply your modifier. And that, of course, is going to affect your unwrapping. It's going to basically double your, your UV layout. But the idea is to, to get rid of all this stuff all this extra stuff to clean your model up so that we can think about organizing for UV unwrapping. All right, so I'm going to keep going with this. I'm going to finish cleaning up the model, and then I'll talk a little bit more about the, the last steps before we go into the UV chapter, which will be the next chapter. All right, I'm back. I have finished optimizing my modifier stack. I've gotten rid of any of the extra vertex groups that I don't need, and I have checked all of my UVs for each panel to make sure that they, they unwrap decently. Uh, the next thing I do next thing we can do is clean up some of these collections. We're done with our image plane, so I can delete this collection entirely, or delete the hierarchy. Booleans, uh, I think I am done with all the booleans. We don't need any of these anymore. Remember from early back on we used those. I can delete that hierarchy. I've gone through my shrink wrap collection. These are the, the base meshes that are used to smooth out the shape of the model, and I've gotten rid of any of the ones that I don't need, but these are ones that are still being used by various shrink wrap modifiers, so I need to keep those. The cutting tools, these are all the tools that were used to um, make the panels nice and sharp and nice and tight. We do not need these anymore. We're done with all that cutting stuff, so I can delete those because I've gotten rid of all of the uh, modifiers that use these as targets, so I can get rid of the cut tools. Um, I have moved the glass pieces over into a... Um, the glass is the black stuff here. Move all the glass pieces into their own collection because I'm not going to export those into Substance Painter. 
And I also have a, another group of things uh, that I'm not going to export just because they're not worth texturing. So like the radio wire here is not worth um, exporting. And the last thing to do for this lesson is just to double check normals because we before we export into Substance Painter, we want to make sure that all our normals are okay. So you want to look for red. So I just went up here, check on face orientation. And if you find one that is backwards, so backwards is red, you go into edit mode and then hit uh, shift N, right? N for November, and that'll flip it around. Um, so just make sure everything's blue. You can see red here because we're looking inside things. That's fine. Just the exterior is all blue. If the normals are reversed before you put it into Substance Painter, you're going to get weird results because Substance Painter is going to be looking at it like it's, you know, looking at it from the inside out kind of thing. All right, so if I am done with this now, I can save my file. And just as a, a note, I'm looking off on the side here. Before I started cleaning up, my blend file was 220,000 kilobytes. It's now about 78,000 kilobytes. So a lot of savings just in, in space, um, but certainly as far as the efficiency of the, of the project, uh, we've gotten rid of all the extraneous stuff. And now we can talk about UV layouts in the next lesson. All right, see you there.